In the early 1900s, railroads were the number one choice for transportation of anything on land, whether it's freight, military weapons, passengers, or hazardous materials. One of the types of locomotives that were a major player in the railroad industry and still are today are called switchers. Switchers are types of locomotives that are typically small in size, with a smaller wheelbase than most engines and a smaller power source, whether it be a diesel engine, electric system, or boiler. They were built to handle large loads and take them at low speeds across short distances. They were mostly used in locomotive yards to prepare trains for the bigger locomotives to take to faraway places and mines to help ship out coal, silver, or gold, whatever it may be, to take over for the horses. The first switchers became popular during the steam era, with them being an absolute necessity as railroads skyrocketed in popularity. However, steam locomotives were very expensive to maintain and run, and that's why one of the leading locomotive manufacturers at the time had to come up with a genius idea. This manufacturer is quite famous to rail fans today and goes by the name of Alco, or American Locomotive Company. Now it's the Roaring Twenties. Switcher locomotives in America typically had a wheelbase of 040 or 060. They had small enough boilers to handle maybe a 12 car loaded freight train at 20 miles per hour. These locomotives, just like most other steam engines at the time, were very costly in maintenance and were hard to replace. Now, I mentioned Alco a little bit ago. Here's where they come into frame. Alco was already a leading steam locomotive manufacturer in the 1920s, but the steam locomotives had already been around for over 70 years at the time. Despite the domination of steam locomotives on the railroads, newer technologies began to emerge around the turn of the century that would eventually revolutionize railroad travel. Although diesel locomotives first appeared at the end of the 19th century, it was not until General Electric combined with electricity in 1917 that the technology became suitable for locomotives. Still, railroads did not incorporate these unproven locomotives until the government in the 1920s mandated railroad companies to eliminate air polluting steam engines from urban rail yards. And so, in 1925, General Electric, in partnership with the Ingersoll Rand and the American Locomotive Company, created the first commercially successful diesel electric locomotive, identified as the number 1000. Number 1000 was known as a box cab. Box cabs immediately became famous after this individual locomotive was put into service. Everyone wanted to try this new diesel technology. Dozens of railroads across America bought these box cabs to put them in yard switching service, which is what they were specifically built for. Railroads like the Long Island Railroad, the New Haven Railroad, and even the Chicago Northwestern and the Milwaukee Road all had their fair share of box cabs, as many of these were built across different variants immediately after the number 1000 had become successful. This first diesel electric locomotive off the assembly line was purchased by the Central Railroad of New Jersey. Other railroads discovered that diesel electrics were more efficient yard switchers because of their maneuverability and cost effective operation, leading to the dieselization of the American railroading fleet and the eventual demise of the steam era. The CNJ number 1000 served for more than 30 years in the Bronx New York rail yards, where B&O freight trains bound for New York terminated and were served by this unit. Now, here's some quick facts about number 1000. First of all, it was built in 1925, as said earlier, in partnership of General Electric and Alco. It was first called GE Demonstrator No. 9681, and it ran on diesel fuel. It had a 15.4 liter, 4-stroke diesel engine putting out just 300 horsepower. It was put in the SC3 class of locomotives. It weighed 60 tons, about 120,000 pounds, and it had a maximum speed of 30 miles per hour, or 48 kilometers an hour. It had a starting tractive effort of 37,200 pounds. The second production unit was sold to the B&O Railroad in 1925 for use in New York City. It served until 1959 and is now at the Museum of Transportation in St. Louis, Missouri. So what happened to these box cabs? Well, they did last a while in service, with most retiring by the late 1950s, but some survived into the early 1960s. Number 1000 was retired in 1957 after 32 years of serving the freight yards in New York City. The box cabs were replaced by much newer switcher locomotives at the time, even though they ran alongside more well-known switches during the lifespans, like the EMD NW2 
the Alco RS1 and S4, built sometime between the late 1930s and mid 1950s. Even though all box cabs were retired, there's still some light for them. Many box cabs have thankfully been preserved. The CNJ number 1000 was cosmetically restored in 2021 to its historic 1950s paint scheme featuring the iconic Statue of Liberty emblem. This restoration was completed in memory of Robert D. Timpany, trustee of the CNJ, and made possible with the generous support of individual donors at the Baltimore National Heritage Area. It may not be in operational condition, but it was at least restored to begin with. If GE and Alco hadn't partnered up that year, the box caps wouldn't be nearly as successful as they were back then. So as stated before, number 1000 was built in 1925. It's 2024 as of recording this video. That means that CNJ 1000 will celebrate its centennial birthday next year in 2025. Built nearly 100 years ago, number 1000 still stands as an American railroading milestone. It has paved the way for diesel electric technology across America and railroads all across the country still use diesel electric switcher locomotives with successful examples being the EMD GP38-2 built in 1972 and the EMD SW1500 built in 1966 used across various different short line railroads and major rail yards. If you enjoyed this video about the history of the world's first successful diesel electric locomotive, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more history videos coming soon. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Have a great day.